Welcome to Mode Bespoke, I'm Atenas, and for today's tutorial I have a cowl project which are going to be using a new Tunisian crochet stitch that I just learned, so let's get started. So here's a look at today's pattern, we're going to be working on a cowl, and we're going to be using a new Tunisian stitch that I just learned. So I've heard this two different ways, so I've learned this as the diamond stitch or the arrow stitch, so you can call it whatever you want. This stitch consists of a two row repeat, and that's what's going to give you the little arrows right here. For the cowl, you're going to need 358 meters or 392 yards of just a number three DK yarn. So you can use any yarn of your choice, and you're also going to need a seven millimeter Tunisian hook. So now let me grab my yarn here and we're going to begin with a slip knot so let's wrap the yarn around two fingers now we're going to insert our hook into that loop and then pull up a loop on our hook and then just tighten our knot and we are ready to begin so now we're going to chain 141 stitches to make a chain we're going to wrap the yarn around our hook so we're going to yarn over and pull this top loop through the bottom loop so that's one and then yarn over pull through that's two yarn over pull through that's three yarn over pull through for four and so forth until you complete a chain that is 141 stitches so once you've chained 141 stitches and then I'm just using a small sample here to show you we're going to begin to cast on using that second stitch from your hook so insert your hook into the second stitch and then you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop and you're just going to leave it on your hook and then you're going to repeat this in the next stitch and in every stitch of the row so just insert your hook into the stitch yarn over and pull up a loop insert your hook into the stitch yarn over and pull up a loop so this is just a regular cast on so once you have all of the loops on your hook your hook is going to look like this and we're going to have to complete a return pass so this is going to be a regular return pass so we yarn over and we're going to pull through one loop we're pulling that loop off of our hook then for the rest of the row we're just going to yarn over and pull through two so yarn over grab the yarn all the way there we go and pull through two yarn over pull through two and so forth until you are left with just one loop on your hook so if you are new to Tunisian crochet, I do have a beginner tutorial, so you can check that out and learn all about casting on and return passes. All right, so once you've completed your return pass, we're gonna begin the stitch on the second vertical stitch from our hook. And you're gonna use two stitches. So you're gonna insert your hook behind that top loop or the top leg of the two vertical stitches. So that's stitch number two, and then stitch number three from your hook. And then you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull that through both of the loops you just inserted your hook through and now if you hold that loop with your index finger this next part is going to be a lot easier so you're going to yarn over and you're going to insert your hook through those loops that we just crocheted into so we're going to reinsert our hook into that into both of those loops so right behind the top leg of both loops yarn over and we're going to pull up a loop so now as you can see we have two additional loops on our hook so we have a total of three from this stitch so now you're going to yarn over and pull through those first two loops so that way we have the same number of stitches on our hook as we had when we first chained so yarn over and pull through both of those loops and now we have two loops which are the same all right there for the two loops that we just worked into so it'll keep our stitch count the same so now we're going to repeat in the next stitch so you're going to insert your hook behind that top loop or the top leg of the next two stitches yarn over and pull up a loop so then I'm just going to hold this down with my index finger and then we're going to yarn over and insert our hook behind both of those stitches again so here's the top leg of the first and second stitch right there and then just yarn over and 
pull up a loop. So now we're going to have a total of three loops, but we're just going to yarn over and pull through those two front loops right there. So yarn over and pull through one and two. And there we go. So let's do another one. We're going to insert our hook behind that top loop or top leg of the next two stitches. Yarn over, pull up a loop, hold it down with our index finger, and then you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that same pair of stitches, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then we're going to finish our stitch with just a yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And there you go. So what you're going to start to notice is that you have a vertical stitch like this, and then you have a vertical stitch which with a bit of a knot. So it's a vertical stitch, knot, vertical stitch, knot. That's how you know you're working the stitch correctly. So just repeat this stitch until you get to the end of the row. At the end of the row, you should be left with one vertical stitch, and then that last stitch of the row. So once you reach the end of the row, it'll look like this. You'll have a vertical stitch, and then you'll have that final stitch of the row. So we're going to work into that final or into that last vertical stitch and you're just going to cast on a Tunisian simple stitch. So insert your hook right behind that top loop, yarn over and cast one loop onto your hook. And now you're just going to cast on into this final stitch of the row. So you'll notice that there's this chain right here and then there's a stitch right next to it. You're going to insert your hook into that last stitch. So skip the chain and go right into the stitch. And I like to go through both of the loops right there, so are both of the little legs, then yarn over and pull up a loop. So once you have completely cast on, complete your return pass. And this is just a regular return pass. So we're going to yarn over and pull through one loop, and then yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two, until you are left with just one loop on your hook. Once you've completed your return pass, it's ready to begin row number three. So for row number three, we're going to skip that first vertical stitch, and we're going to work in that second vertical stitch, and we're just going to cast on a Tunisian simple stitch. So insert your hook behind that top loop, yarn over, and pull up a loop, and that's it. And now we begin our arrow stitch, beginning on that second pair of stitches. So let me show you what we're trying to do with this stitch. So this is a pair of stitches. So it's got the vertical stitch and then the little knot right after it. So what we want to do is take one stitch from one pair and join it with a stitch from another pair. So here we have that last little knot stitch of the pair. That's going to be the first of our two stitches that we're going to crochet together. So insert your hook into that stitch and into the next stitch. And then we're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, and we complete the rest of the diamond stitch. So now we yarn over, insert our hook into that same stitch, yarn over, and then pull up a loop. We're going to have both of those loops on our hook again. And we just yarn over and pull through two. And then the rest of the row, we just continue working repetitions of the arrow stitch. So we go through two, oh, two of the vertical stitches. We're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And then we're going to yarn over again insert our hook into that same pair of stitches, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then we close our stitch. So yarn over and pull through two. So by working with one stitch of each pair from the previous row, you're going to start interlocking this stitch, which is going to create that arrow look. So if you don't interlock them, you're going to notice that you have little clumps. So it's going to be more like little rows. But okay, once we get to the end of the row, it should look like this. So you'll have a pair of stitches and then that final stitch of the row. So with that pair of, that last pair of vertical stitches, we're just going to crochet one more arrow stitch. And we're going to finish the row here by casting on into that final stitch. So it's that one right there on the side. And we're just going to cast that on. And there we go. We've completed another row. So then just complete your return pass, and then I'll start the next row with you guys one more time. So this is what our stitch looks like. So as you can see, now we're starting to see the little arrows, and this is resulting from 
interlocking our stitches. So that's what I was trying to show you a little bit earlier. So now with row number four, so this is just going to be a repetition of row number two. So as you can see, here's that little pair. So to interlock the stitch, we're going to use that second vertical stitch right here from our hook. So the second and third stitch, we're going to crochet our arrow stitch right into that. So insert our hook behind that top loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, hold it down, yarn over, and insert our hook back into that stitch, and then we're going to close our arrow stitch right there. So then for the rest of the row, all you do is crochet the arrow stitch. Once you get to the end, you're going to have just that one loop. And then all you do is just repeat row two and three. So that was a repetition of row two. When you complete that row, work another repetition of row three, and you're going to create a fabric that measures approximately 15 inches or about 38 centimeters. So that was about 28 rows, at least for me. Um, but it might be a little bit different for you, so that's why I go with about 15 inches. And then once you're done, we're going to complete a bind off. So as you've probably noticed, the stitches are quite open at the top, so we have to close those up so that the top of our cowl matches the bottom of the cowl. So for this, we're going to complete a single crochet bind off, but this one's going to be a little bit different than what we normally do. So you're going to insert your hook behind both of the, the loops or both of the legs of the vertical stitch. So beginning on that second vertical stitch, we're going to insert our hook behind both of the little legs. Or see both of the loops that make up the stitch? Just insert your hook right behind both of those, and then yarn over and pull up a loop. Once you have two loops on your hook, you're going to single crochet. So for this, you're going to yarn over and pull through, so that top loop, you're going to pull through both of those loops right below, like so. So let's repeat here in that next vertical stitch. So insert your hook behind both of the loops that make up the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So once you have two loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through two for a single crochet. So insert your hook behind both of the legs of the vertical stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and once you have two loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through two. So just continue to, uh, to work a single crochet into each of the vertical stitches of the row. This does include that very final stitch as well. So let me work on this really quickly and then we will work on sewing it together. But here we go. So here's a look at what we're doing. So here's the row without the bind off and here's the bind off as we've completed it so far. So Keep working on the rest of this row. I'll see you again here in just a moment. All right, so we're here at the end, and I've got one last vertical stitch and then that final stitch of the row. But I just wanted to make sure that everyone crocheted a single crochet here on that final stitch. So let's work on that one together. So we're just going to insert our hook there and single crochet. And then to end this, this row, I just crochet a chain stitch to make a little knot at the bottom. And then just cut your yarn, weave in all of the ends that you've got, and then we'll begin on sewing our cowl together. Alright, so our cowl is finished. I've woven in all my ends. We're ready to sew this up. So we're just going to grab some yarn and a yarn or tapestry needle. And we're going to make a knot in one of the ends of the yarn. So don't make it a double thread, just a single thread is fine. So let's make a knot here. And now to sew this, so normally when I sew some of my work together, I use the stitches here along the side, so right there. With this one, it's a little bit difficult to do that because since the stitches are so big, you're going to have a very open seam. So it's going to be really, really visible and really open. So we're going to work this a little bit differently, and we're going to stitch through that first pair of arrow stitches. So just the first pair of vertical stitches. We're going to do this on both sides too. Line these up, so just make sure that you line up your corners. And then, so here's that first pair of vertical stitches on one side, and then we're going to do the same thing on this, the pair on the other side. So let me get all set up, and we'll just start sewing this together. So our first stitch is going to be at the very top of the cowl. So the topmost stitches on either side, you're just going to insert your needle going from back to front, and then stitch along the other side 
and then I'm just going to give this a double stitch just to make sure that my cowl isn't going to pop open. So there we go. And now once you've sewn up the edges, you're ready to begin with the rest of the sewing. So I'm going to move into, here we go, that knot stitch on the, on the pair of vertical stitches that's on the right side of my work. And I'm going to stitch from that pair of stitches towards the center of the cowl. And I'm just going to go towards the center. I'm not going to go all the way across just to make it a little easier to see when I'm, when I'm sewing here. So I'm going to start here at the knot stitch of the vertical stitches and go all the way across here to the center. So right here to that center opening, pull my needle out, and then I'm going to stitch from the center into that the knot stitch of that uh, second vertical stitch, so the, the second stitch of the pair. So insert my needle here and go into the knot. There we go. So now we're going to turn this around and stitch in the opposite direction, but we're going to stitch in a bit of a diagonal. So instead of going straight across, start trying to work towards the row below it. So slant your stitch a little bit and then just start from that knot stitch and then go across to the other side. So I'll stop here in the center again just so you can kind of get a better idea of what I'm doing. There we go. And then leave your stitching loose. All you want to do is just close the cowl. If you tighten it too much, you're going to create a lot of separation between those stitches and you're going to have a visible seam again. So just don't use too much tension while you're sewing. All right, so we made it all the way across to the other side. And now all we do is just go diagonal in the opposite direction. Go. I'm just going to go here to the center. There we go. So as you're sewing along, just make sure that you have enough tension to close or to join both sides of the cowl together. So anything more than that will create a really, really visible seam. So just continue to sew along the ends of the cowl. Remember to keep a loose tension and then just work slowly and it'll, it'll leave a more invisible seam that way. But once you're finished, you can add a little label, a little button, whatever you want to the bottom of it, and you're all ready to go. The written pattern for this project is available on my website. I'm gonna leave a link in the description box below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna see some more of my work, you can always follow me on Instagram. I'll leave all of those links down below. If you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all again in the next tutorial.